Hi folks, Doc here. It's Easter weekend and it's really nice outside for a change. Uh, the snow is finally, finally melted, uh, except for a few, you know, holdout spots. Hell with them. And uh, it's well above zero. It's probably, uh, probably about 14 or 15 Celsius right now, uh, which for you American folks is <coughs> warm enough. I'm out here in a t-shirt, that's all that matters. Anyways, uh, I thought, uh, thought I'd shift gears off the mower stuff for a little while to show you a project that I've been playing with on and off for a couple of years now. Uh, it's a utility trailer that I've kind of nicknamed Robo Trailer because I got a couple of tricks up my sleeve. Let me show you what I got. This is Robo Trailer. Doesn't look like much. Well, maybe a rusted hulk at the moment. Uh, there's really not much to see. It's a 4x8 box trailer with no floor in it yet, as you can see. Uh, and you can probably tell by the primer on the joints in there and the fact that the frame steel is not as rusty looking as everything else around here that it's got a new frame. Robo Trailer came to me used and free. Uh, from family and they were getting rid of it because of the fact that the frame had completely entirely rusted out the box was holding it together it was a nasty sight I used it a couple of times before I said okay well nuts to this this is just simply unsafe and when I took it apart the frame and suspension completely collapsed as soon as I cut the box off and lifted it I think I've got a picture somewhere and I'll see if I can scab it into the editing this blue pole that you see here is for one of those pickup truck mounted crane hoist things which I thought would be a neat addition to Robo Trailer here so that you can lift stuff up and out of the box uh, without too much effort. Let me show you some of the other features that I'm engineering into this thing. After replacing the frame I looked at the one piece drop down gate and if you look carefully there you can see it's two pieces. And I decided that a one-piece drop-down gate was cool for loading tractors and stuff onto, but a bit of a pain in the rear end when you're bombing other stuff on and off. And it was definitely big enough and heavy enough that taking it off to get it out of your way was just not an option. So I wound up splitting the ramps into two pieces. And I did some experimenting. And uh, I kind of goofed around with some hinge points and stuff, and none of this is permanent. It was experiment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to double hinge the gates so that it can either open up, you know, like a ramp dropping down or, uh, well, let me use this side, or a barn door opening out sideways. And you're going to be able to pull the vertical hinges to get it to drop down like a ramp or pull the horizontal hinge pins to get it to swing out like a gate. And uh, when you put all the hinge pins in, it'll just simply hold them closed. As you can see here, I've got a ring mount jack, and there's the ring welded to the tongue, and there's the jack in the ring mount. And when you want to jack up the tongue, you put the jack on the ring, you drop the pin in, and you jack it, and that's all fine and good. But let me show you something I got up my sleeve here. Anybody that's ever had a flat tire on the trailer knows what a pain in the rear end it can be to go digging through your vehicle to get your vehicle jack out and then try to get it under the trailer and depending on the height of the trailer it may not be high enough or you've got to dig it underneath the axle there and that's a pain in the rear end. I specifically chose a ring mount jack for this purpose. Uh, not one of the ones that bolts on and swivels and stays put. I definitely wanted something removable and I'll show you why. I welded a piece of inch and a half gas pipe to the frame on both sides. If you get yourself a flat tire you put the jack on it. You can optionally drill it for the pin. It's actually not necessary as long as it's tied to the tow vehicle. I've done this before. And bang. No sweat. You can change a tire at the side of the road without having to dig your jack out. Trying to make this trailer as versatile as possible, uh, I engineered the double folding ramps on the back uh, to make putting things on and taking them off easy. 
And I decided at the same time, even though I'm going to have a ramp, wouldn't it be handy to have a tilt and load? Now, I've had tilt and load trailers in the past, which, uh, you know, have a little catch up front here, and they allow you to tilt the bed up and do your thing, and I found a couple of problems with that. Uh, first off, um, you're pretty much at the mercy of gravity and balance. You know, you can pull the pin, and, you know, you reach a certain point, and wham, the thing flips up. Okay, well, it's up, and that's fine, and you start struggling to get your load on there, and you reach the fulcrum of the hinge, and it goes bang, and it falls back down again. And there's, there's no way to hold it up or hold it, you know, in position. There's no way to control it. Uh, and I decided, well, you know what I want to do? I want to have some sort of power tilt that I can hold in any position. It goes up under full control. It goes down under full control. And uh, I'm a little bit too cheap for an electric linear actuator. Those things can get pretty pricey. And I didn't want to have to do the extra wiring to the tow vehicle. And I wanted to make it so I could use this with any tow vehicle. Um, and hydraulics were definitely, definitely out of the equation because I just didn't want the complexity and added cost. Here's what I came up with. What I have here is a, a jack handle from an old Toyota pickup truck with a spark plug socket welded to it. And what I have here is the key to the whole operation. Go ahead and stick that on there. We're going to pull the latch pin. And let's see what happens here. So there you see, with it tilted all the way up, she's got her butt down on the ground. And with it tilted all the way up, I can give you a better picture of what's going on. The entire trailer tilts on the axle as its fulcrum. And the trickery is all down here in the frame. I've got a couple of pivot points welded to the frame and those will be reinforced and gusseted. Things are still in mock-up right now and the tongue pivots off that. The key to the whole operation is this Toyota pickup truck jack and uh, I attached a couple of pivot points to it, one to the tongue and one to the trailer frame. Let me get a better underview here. And then I've got a universal joint from a GM steering column, a length of shaft, and a pillow block bearing tied to the frame. The whole mechanism together looks like that. So what else have I got cooking for Robo Trailer? Well, aside from what I've already shown you, and aside from a serious cleanup and a paint job and a new set of rims, because yeah, these things are pretty evil. I'm also looking at creating an upper deck. Well, not a complete deck, I've anyways. I've decided that it's all fine and good that I can take a go kart or a lawn tractor in the bed of this thing, uh, but it's occurred to me. There might be occasions where I need to take two lawn tractors somewhere, or two go-karts somewhere, one of each, or, you know, maybe I'm taking off for the weekend and I'm going to have a good time somewhere and I've got stuff to carry as well as maybe a tractor to romp around in the bush in, or whatever the case may be. So I've decided that I'm going to build an upper level structure for this thing. And what that's basically going to consist of, probably, is a hoop that spans here up about yay high I'm gonna guess. I don't want it too high but I want it high enough to clear whatever's underneath. And uh, a removable hoop probably for the rear that's gonna come across to about the same height. Still working on that but we'll get back to that. And what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to get two of those steel loading ramps that you would buy for a pickup truck and uh, they're going to span those two uprights and uh, of course they'll be secured with a pin or something so they can't you know, rattle off and fall out and uh, you basically wind up with two runners uh, adjustable centers so that whatever I've got parked up here you know it lines up with the wheels uh, so that you know a tractor or a go-kart or something can be secured on the top level with stuff on the bottom level now you're asking me how are you going to get that tractor up and down reasonably easily uh, when you know clearly you can see over here the ramps are only so long and that would be just one hell of a you're not loading like that well for those of you that have been paying attention over the last couple of minutes that's where the tilt and load really shines uh, I'm going to make it so that I can remove these gates from the rear in their normal resting positions and pin them to this upper hoop here uh, so that they're in place and then when I tilt the trailer that's going to give me ramps to the upper level and that's going to put everything on enough of an angle that I don't have you know a big ridiculous ramp angle uh, and then I can use this crane here because it's got a winch on it to bring the load up onto the upper level and secure it and then you know I can drop the trailer back down to its resting position put the ramps back where they belong strap everything down and away I go as the robo trailer project unfolds and I get a little bit more done to it piece by piece a little bit at a time I should get it done fairly quickly I'm gonna need it soon um, I'm definitely going to keep you posted. I'll do some more videos on that and show you all the individual features in operation once they're ready, uh, like the upper deck and the gates and all that stuff. And uh, with a little bit of luck, maybe I can inspire somebody else to, uh, you know, use the same ideas or perhaps even expand on them, which I really like to see. You know, some people seem to be concerned about people using their ideas. I'm not one of those people. Uh, I very much like to see people take an idea that I've spawned or that I've put out there and uh, expand on it and improve on that. And I've already seen a few examples of that. You know, way to go. Excellent. Good stuff. In the meantime, I'd like to thank you once again for tuning into Sprocket's Garage on YouTube. And until next time, take care of yourself. Yeah.